Welcome back to Building Character, where we figure out how to play as your favorite fictional characters in Dungeons & Dragons. Remember to vote in the poll at the top right corner of the video, and like and subscribe for a cooler team name next time you play. Maybe. Today we're building Ruby Rose from Ruby, not the professional actress, which I really wish I had figured out before I finished an entire script based off of her filmography. Got to watch John Wick 2 again though, so not a total loss. Now that your rose is in blue, the light is the gloom on the gray. Let's start off with our goals for this build. First, we need a big old scythe, and the sickle from the player's handbook ain't gonna cut it for us. We need something a little better. Next, we need to apparate with rose petals. Wait, is this a Marluxia build? Finally, we'll get some silver eyes and powers that come with them. For stats, we'll be using the standard point array from the player's handbook. Roll for stats if you want, but watch your charisma and strength. Strength will be number one. Your scythe is big and chonky. Charisma next. You're the leader of the bunch. They know you well. Dexterity after that. You're incredibly quick for someone with a giant shotgun scythe. Follow that up with intelligence. You're pretty knowledgeable about Grim. It should help you call your shots as well. Constitution is a bit on the lower end. You're fairly tough, but you don't take that many hits. And while Dump Wisdom, you're kind of impulsive. Well, you're also a teenager, so nobody should be blaming you for that. I am going to go with a Variant Human for race, though an Asimar could be fun if you want some extra Radiant Oomph. Variant Humans get a feat. The Polearm Master Feat lets you make an attack with the back end of a Polearm as a bonus action that deals 1d4 bludgeoning damage, and you can make opportunity attacks with the Polearm if they have reach, which, spoilers, yours will. Bump your dexterity and your strength with your two free points, take persuasion for your skill of choice, and build your own background for arcana and investigation. Call it the gifted program kid. Just know that later in life you're going to feel an immeasurable pressure to be successful that will undoubtedly give you some sort of anxiety. Anyway. We'll kick things off as a fighter. First level fighters can grab two skills from the fighter list. Athletics and acrobatics are good skills for girls who carry giant weapons and swing them like they're jump ropes. For your fighting style, great weapon fighting lets you reroll ones and twos on damage die with two-handed weapons. And let's clarify that you're not using a sickle because that weapon is garbage. Instead, use a glaive. It deals 1d10 slashing damage and it's a polearm. So you get your polearm master abilities to have two attacks per round at level one, which is pretty darn nice even if one of those is only a d4. You also get second wind letting you recover 1d10 plus your fighter level and HP as a bonus action once per short rest in case some villains interrupt your tournament arc. Second level fighters get action surge, letting you make two actions in one turn once per short rest. So that's two attacks with the sharp end and one with the blunt end for some pretty great damage once per short rest, though we'll get more attacks later. Third level fighters can choose a martial archetype and battle masters are great for leading a team and studying strange foes. You get four superiority die per short rest, which are d8s you can spend on maneuvers like sweeping attack, which lets you hit an enemy within five feet of the original target you hit with your superiority die for the damage, as long as the original attack roll would have hit the second person. Fainting attack lets you spend a bonus action to give yourself advantage on an attack roll and add your superiority die to the damage. Tripping attack lets you add your superiority die to the damage of an attack and force a dexterity save of eight plus your proficiency bonus and strength modifier on a creature, knocking them prone if they fail. So Wooby can get all the damage on their melee attacks until they stand up. Of course, there's always student of war, which gives you proficiency in a set of artisan's tools. I don't know. Maybe take calligraphy, I guess? But only if you want the power of the gods. Fourth level fighters get an ability score improvement. Bump that strength up. I would like it capped off as soon as possible, please. Partially for your attack accuracy, but more so for your damage modifier, because the more attacks you get per round, the more a flat bump improves the damage. Fifth level fighters get an extra attack, letting you make two attacks instead of one with your action, or four attacks with an action surge, plus another attack from Polearm Master to get the most out of our capped strength. Ruby is almost as fast with her scythe as Weiss is with her rapier, so we've got to be getting those attacks going. Sixth level fighters get an ability score improvement so we can cap off our strength modifier for maximum slashes, gashes, and pedal thrashes. That's a thing, right? Pedal thrashes? Seventh level battle masters can know their enemy getting a read on the strength, dexterity, constitution, AC, HP, fighter levels, or total levels of a creature with two pieces of information per minute of study. If you can control your urge to just dive in and go ham, it could really be helpful for the team. You also get another superiority die and learn two more maneuvers. Parry lets you reduce the damage of an attack that hits you by an amount equal to your superiority die plus your dexterity modifier, and Repost lets you punish an enemy that misses you by hitting them with an opportunity attack with extra damage from your 
your superiority die as well. I'm not sure what your armor is really. It looks like a normal dress. Maybe we'll get something later that will keep us covered, even if we're not exactly made of steel. Eighth level fighters get another ability score improvement or a feat. The Great Weapon Master feat will let you make an attack with a full weapon as a bonus action when you land a crit or reduce an enemy to zero HP. But more importantly, you can take a negative five penalty to your attack roll to add 10 to the damage roll on any attack you make with a two-handed weapon. There's no stipulation that stops you from doing this with the blunt end of your pole arm either. So with action surge and five superiority die, you can deal 4d10 plus 5d8 plus 1d4 plus 75 damage in a single round. I'm just going to go ahead and say that's probably enough martial skill. Let's get a semblance and some silver eyes now. We'll do this by bouncing over to Warlock, specifically a Celestial Warlock for spoiler reasons. This will give you Healing Light, which are a bunch of D6s equal to 1 plus your Warlock level, and you can give them to allies to restore HP, but only an amount equal to your Charisma modifier per round. Think of it as a good word of encouragement. You can also learn Cantrips, and Eldritch Blast will be our method of shooting stuff out of our scythe, even if it will still take a minute to shoot things out of our scythe. This shoots two beams that deal 1d10 force damage, each is a ranged spell attack. Why use this instead of a crossbow? Well, a heavy crossbow is a heavy weapon, and a glaive is a heavy weapon, so switching those in and out isn't that fast, and that's not really Ruby's modus operandi either. Trust me, it's better for damage as well in the long run. Free other cantrips, friends is a terrible spell for making friends. It gives you advantage on charisma checks on a creature that isn't hostile towards you, though after the spell's one minute duration, they'll realize you've bamboozled them and probably be hostile. Still, you have an unnatural talent for steamrolling people to do what you want. Maybe it's magic. Maybe it's Maybelline. For first level spells, Expeditious Retreat lets you dash as a bonus action. You don't actually have to run away with it, and Ruby is hella fast. Guiding Bolt is a big laser beam you could shoot out of your Scyther rifle, dealing 4d6 radiant damage on a hit and giving the next creature to attack the target advantage on their roll, so you can call the shot by taking the shot. Second level Warlocks get Invocations, letting you make yourself a little bit more special than you were before. Agonizing Blast lets you add your Charisma modifier to the damage rolls of your Eldritch Blast attacks, and Armor of Shadows lets you cast mage armor on yourself at will, making your AC 13 plus your dexterity while you're not wearing armor. Like I said, you're not really wearing armor, you just have a cool hood. And this will make your cool hood somewhat practical. Third level warlocks get a packed boon. It's a gift from your patron or in your case, your uncle. Packed to the blade lets you choose a weapon that you can conjure up as an action at will. Obviously go for your glaive. And it's magical in terms of overcoming resistances. Now, unfortunately, conjuring this weapon doesn't also send a giant locker that could crush an enemy or give you a ride back to base, but it's still ready on demand. Man, that's nice. I'm also going to be swapping some invocations at this level as well. Drop Agonizing Blast and scoop up Improved Packed Weapon, which will give you a plus one to attack and damage rolls with your Packed Weapon, and you can now use it as a spell casting focus. So hooray, you can now shoot your Eldritch Blast Beams out of your scythe, and we don't have to take Warcaster. Not that Warcaster is a bad feat, we just really need all the ability score improvements we can get. You also can learn second level spells. Misty Step lets you teleport 30 feet as a bonus action, so you can turn into some Rose Petals and bamf around if you want to get this stuff earlier again mix it in earlier i just want to make sure that these builds feel viable for your campaign as quickly as possible and the extra attack and extra ability scores from fighter really help you get things going a little bit quicker fourth level warlocks get an ability score improvement bump your charisma for better shots from your eldritch blast gun thing for this level spell spider climb lets a creature you touch run up walls and on ceilings for up to an hour depending on your concentration if you want to run up a cliff this is a pretty good tool for that fifth level warlocks can learn third level spells counter spell automatically shuts down a spell of third level or lower and can shut down higher level spells with a charisma check of 10 plus the spell's level which should help you block more intense blasts with your special weapon for this level's invocation just get agonizing blast back you already know what that does we already talked about it sixth level celestial warlocks get radiant soul which gives you resistance to radiant damage and lets you add your charisma modifier to the damage of an attack that deals radiant or fire damage so your guiding bolt would be an option to make a bigger scythe blast a little bit bigger for this level spell daylight fills a 60 foot sphere with bright light and 60 feet out from that with dim light dispelling any magically created darkness of third level or lower for an hour while a ton of light shoots out of your eyes seventh level warlocks can learn fourth level spells dimension door beefs up your rose petal semblance by letting you teleport 500 feet as an action and you can bring a buddy with you if you want to give your sister a hand 
that was a that was a poor choice of words you also get another invocation and your scythe is a sniper rifle so let's get a sniper rifle range with eldritch spear which bumps the range of an eldritch blast from 120 feet to 300 feet letting you get things done from an uncle's nest eighth level warlocks get another ability score improvement keep getting that charisma higher so you can become better at shooting and leading the team you're really starting to come into your own right before everyone gets separated for a really long time ninth level warlocks can learn fifth level spells flame strike comes off the celestial list it creates a 10 foot radius 40 foot high cylinder of bright light that deals 4d6 fire and 4d6 radiant damage to creatures that fail a dexterity saving throw inside half as much to those that succeed finally you can make your silver eyes actually hurt something rather than just being slightly edgier for this level's invocation otherworldly leap lets you cast the jump spell on yourself at will tripling your jump distance for a horizontal maximum distance of 50 feet and a vertical distance of 24 it's 50 feet because you can't exceed your total movement with a jump and still need 10 feet of run up though if you had expeditious retreat going you could still get the full 60 anyway this should help you get where you need to be without spending your limited spell slots on misty steps or dimension doors 10 level celestial warlocks get celestial resistance making you and your squad a little bit better by giving you and your five closest friends hp equal to your warlock level plus your charisma modifier at the end of every short rest i'd give it to blake weiss yang john ringo damn it that's a beetle 11th level warlocks can learn a mystic arcanum spell which is just a sixth level spell that recharges on a long rest instead of a short rest like your other spells flush to stone will let you restrain a creature that fails a constitution saving throw after that they have to make three constitution saving throws to avoid being petrified which is a status that doesn't show up a lot in these videos so let's talk about it first the creature is incapacitated which is another condition that means that they can't take actions or reactions they can't move they can't speak or perceive their surroundings attack rolls against them have advantage they automatically fail strength and dexterity saves but they have resistance to all damage and they're immune to new effects of poison and disease now back to those constitution saves they don't have to be made in sequence it's kind of like a death saving throw so track successes and failures if you maintain your concentration for the spell's one minute duration the creature remains petrified that way until the effect is removed by something like greater restoration since it will just stay that way maybe they'll even put it in the intro that'd be cool our capstone is the 12th level of warlock for an ability score improvement cap off your charisma so that not even a dragon would be able to pass your constitution saves we'll also get one last invocation repelling blast will let you keep the grim at bay by pushing them 10 feet back in a straight line when you hit them with an eldritch blast and since you have four beams per round at this point that means you could push them 40 feet there's no limit on size or how many times you can use it in a round this is excellent position control now that we've hit level 20 let's figure out how viable this build is first your damage is great with huge damage from great weapon master attacks superiority die and a capped strength modifier up close and agonizing blast for your ranged attacks you also don't have to worry about resistances because all of your damage is either coming from a magical packed weapon or a magical spell finally you're very mobile with teleportation to get you where you need to go and a huge jump distance for when you run out of slots which brings us to our first weakness you have four spell slots that you can use in any given fight so you could be running out pretty quickly you're also very easy to hit with 15 ac at level 20 being worse than most pure casters finally your constitution being low makes you less tough in the front and less concentrated from afar but that's why you have 500 feet of teleportation and a sniper rifle dive in deal a ton of damage then bam fast out and zone with eldritch blast just watch out for someone fast enough to chase you down or another scythe wielding character might be coming for you thanks for watching if you like the video subscribe for more we make two videos every week if you want you can vote in the poll for the next anime character to be done you can vote for roy mustang from full metal alchemist inosuke from demon slayer or bakugo from my hero academia and as always remember to subscribe to two lock and mango people it's a very fun place